The Small Business Show, episode 367 for Wednesday, February 16th, 2022. And welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we are always small business-ing every week. Sponsors for this episode include shopify.com slash SBS. We will talk about how you can go get your 14-day free trial at that URL and why you're going to want to do that. We'll talk about that a little later in the episode. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out here in uh, sunny California... I'm Shannon Jean. It's going to be 70 degrees out here, Dave. Okay. <laughs> Today. Listen, man. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I had, we had an, we had a weird set of precipitation this week where uh. the, the temperature dropped from like 40 on Thursday down to about negative two at uh. some point Saturday night. And now it's back up into like the, the thirties, forties ish. Uh. It, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the problem was it rained on Thursday into oh. Friday. And so it was this rain that turned to ice that turned oh. to a little bit of snow that Dang. was. And then for most of Friday, it was literally just spitting ice. It was not sleet. Ooh. It was yeah, just yeah, ice yeah. from the sky. And what we wound up with were mountains of ice in our driveway. Oh. The li- The snowblower didn't work. Shovel didn't work. Not really. The You're only stuck. thing I had <laughs> to I had to because I had to move some of these. I used a, uh, uh, I have a splitting mall, which is like a sledgehammer. Yeah, use it for sure. firewood, right? Yep, it, yep. It, one end of the sledge is is triangular. It's not really sharp, but it's got a triangle on it. Yeah. Yep. And so uh, that was the only thing I thought, well, let me try the splitting mall. And sure enough, I, I was able to get the, you know, the, the break up the ice mountain. And then I used the snowblower to relocate the crumbs. But uh, wow. it hurt. I couldn't. The next day I had a gig. It sounds I, like it hurts. <laughs> I literally couldn't hold drumsticks in my hand <laughs> at times because it might like so my hands bad. are just weak. So, yeah, yeah. you and your. Uh, your sunny weather, I know. you can take a hike, man. Everybody's like in shorts around here. I mean, we we need we do need some more rain. We're I think we're still a little bit behind. Even we had some massive uh-huh. and, uh, massive storms in December, but my gosh, it's crazy. Yeah, we're not we don't swear on this show, so I'm I'm choosing my yes. words carefully here, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> yes, yes, I understand. I understand. But this is not a uh, podcast about the weather. Um, what are we talking about today? Uh, we're talking about all kinds of things. We've got a little bit of yeah. a grab bag of stuff. We are going to talk about the problem solving mindset. We had mm, some examples of, of how that really is also the small businessing mindset. I think I'm going to buy small businessing.com for us. I think we should have okay. that. That so sounds good. I am, uh, I am pulling the trigger on that literally as Perfect. we type here. Yeah. Like so, uh, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, w- I think we're going to have time to talk about creating uh, a culture focused on results that may wind up, depending on how the yeah. other topics go, that one yeah. might wind up getting pushed to, to next week because Another that's show, a, right? that's a good one. The first thing that I want to talk about though, is dissecting the Wordle business. Listen, yeah. I know if you're on social media, you're probably sick and tired of seeing all the Wordle posts. That's what I want to talk about. <laughs> okay, great. Because yeah. this is perfect. Because I don't, I know nothing about that. Sure. Uh, about Wordle. I, I mean, I have a sense of what it is, of course. But uh, just hearing primarily about it being acquired and some stuff going on, but I, I, I don't. Uh, so I'm, I'm very yeah. interested to learn about this. Yeah, it's a fascinating business model, and I think there's something to learn. Uh, from this for all of us in in different ways, perhaps. So to call it a business model is both completely accurate and also a little bit of a stretch. Uh, But bear with me on this because I really think that there is a model here. So Wordle, you're right. It's, it's a, it's a game where you, you guess a, a word of the day and everybody in the world gets the same word of the day. Oh. It, it, it will be a five letter word. You guess five letters. Uh, it tells you what letters you got right. And if they're in the right spot or not, and you have six ch- chances to get it right. That's all you need to know about Wordle. And it's an app. No, it's a web based. Well, right? no. it is web based. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's part of the model here, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's all it is. And, and you either succeed or you fail. And, and when you fail, you can share your results. That's what it is today. What it started as 
was developer, this guy named Josh Wardle, W-A-R-D-L-E, hence mm. the name, right? Yep. Uh, his wife liked playing word games. I think the New York Times has a couple of word games before they bought Wordle, but they did buy Wordle. Uh, it, you know, they had some others she liked playing. He's a developer. And as his wife said in, in an interview that coincidentally was done in the New York Times, you know, uh, it, Josh's love language is creating things for her, writing little apps yeah. and things like that for her. And so this had a target audience of one and it was Josh's wife. That's cool. And now she is a huge part of why this game is a success because he built this game and the, the gist of it sounds like it was basically the same all the way through. Like the, the fundamental of the game never changed, right? He conceived of this five letter word thing. And that was right. that. He started with a Scrabble dictionary of uh, five letter words because you have to start with something. And it had like maybe 6,000 words in it, let's say. His okay. wife. So then he he sets up this little engine. He built it in JavaScript, which I want to talk about in a minute because that's part mm. of the model. And, uh, you know, and he, he said, here, you know, my dear, my love. It's a gift. Play this. Right. Here yeah. you go. Yeah. Okay. And she came back and she's like, this is stupid. I didn't know this, like today's word, I failed, but even when I got to the end and it told me what the word is, it looked like a jumble of letters to me. Like I, I oh. did not recognize this word. And she's like, that's not fun for me. And he was like, oh, well, that's fair. And so then he had her go through this list of 5,000 words and select the 2,432 or something that okay. she recognized. And so those are the only words that will be selected as word of the day. Now that still gives you several years worth sure. of, of okay. words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I, I I dug into the engine a little bit, but um, I think both dictionaries are actually loaded into the app. The the dictionary of what the the answers are from from which one is selected each day. And like I said, it's the same one for everyone. And then also, I think that six thousand word dictionary is in there as the permitted guesses dictionary, right? So you can guess a word that would never be the word of the day, but you have to guess five letter words. You can't just put A, B, C, D, E, F, right? A, B, C, D, E, no F. Um, yeah. You can't put A, B, C, D, E in there and and find out if any of those letters are in the word. You have to guess legitimate words and those can come from that 6,000 word dictionary, right? But but so it was it was already being iterated on because the gameplay was needed to be challenging enough but also fun enough and easy enough for it to be fun right so yeah that makes sense but this was I, I think this was really important that again it was an audience of one and i it reminded me of podcasting right we create the show that we would want to listen to and the assumption is and it has proven out many many times you know not just with this show but you know it pretty much every other show that exists the assumption is that there will be other people that want that same thing. And so, but you're, you're, you know, you and I say the riches are in the niches, right? And yeah, and it's yeah. that mindset of don't worry about what everybody else wants. Pick your target audience, pick your avatar. Now in, in Josh like Wardle's that. case, it was a literal human. There was no avatar, right? It was his wife. She's yeah. real. Uh, but, you know, pick that one person and build it for that. And that one person might be you, might be your wife, or it might be this fictitious person or a friend that you haven't talked to in 20 years, but this is the person you want to impress, right? They say when you're writing, uh, you know, prose you, or an article, a news article or something that you should have one single person in mind to whom yeah. you are addressing this. Your primary customer. Your primary customer. Exactly. And it turns yeah. out that if you follow uh, Twitter, there, there are about 350,000 people per day that post their uh, Wordle results on Twitter so there are more than one person like his wife that wants this game uh, and wants to play it. And and so he wrote this. Right. And and he wrote it. It's important to know that this is not the first piece of software for the Web that he has written. He he is a software engineer. He is technically a solopreneur. He, he created this thing and then sold it. So that, you know, that makes yeah. you a business yeah. owner. Yeah. But he's a, he's an employee. Uh, it, you know, he worked for a long time at Reddit as a software engineer and a project manager over there. He created uh, the button at Reddit, which was this thing where, you know, you could reset the button or somebody else could. And, and it was this who's going to be the last one to reset it. But a social game 
right? He created okay. Place, which was this thing that was like the first wall of pixels that was this, you know, collaborative art project. You place one pixel, somebody else places oh, another. Right? Yeah, he did both of those things. So, mm. like, he thinks this way, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he knew how to think about things that would be interesting to a, a sizable subsection of humanity, right? And and so, you know, Mortal fits right into all of those other things. It's very much like the button. It's very much like place uh, in those ways. But he also knew how to make it lean and mean uh, in terms of the development. When you go to play Wordle, you visit his website and you see Wordle up in front of you. At that moment in time, you are finished interacting with his server. Wordle runs entirely in your web browser, including both of those dictionaries. The whole thing loads. The whole thing loads and you're done. So you're. it's not like every time you guess his server has to... It analyze what you've put in there and all that. It's all there, including all of the words and a very specific calculation that uses the date and time to select a unique entry from the, the, the database of 2,400 words that his wife said were okay. So that's why everybody gets the same word of the day. If you change the clock on your computer, you'd get a different word. Uh, if you want to, you can look at the JavaScript code and, Grab that calculation, yeah. run it against the dictionary, and you can find out what tomorrow's word is going to be ahead of time. It's no problem. Mm. In fact, there are websites that will already do this for you because, again, it's all right out in the public. It, it's JavaScript. It's really not that difficult. He wisely uh, named his variables something not obvious so that if you're just scanning through the code quickly, you wouldn't see like, you know, word of the day that, yeah, you know, like okay. he named it something very generic or whatever. So it's, you know, he, again, not his first rodeo. And so all of these things meant that it could scale very easily because it wasn't going to crater his server when it went from one person to millions of people playing this game. It's fine. He didn't need to worry about that. He knew how to do that. And it was just how it worked. Um, uh, and it's interesting. The, the New York Times picked it up. We, I don't know what the, the terms of the deal were, but everything that I've read said that it's somewhere in the seven figure range. Uh, right. So let's figure he picked up a million bucks for it. Right. That's that's low seven. Fig that's the lowest yes. of the seven figures. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. He could have gone the Google AdWords route. Right. You know, put some ads on the page and and he would have made plenty of money. I'm certain. Um, yeah. But he didn't. So choose, did did he they didn't promote or, or market? The at all, or was it just word of mouth and social media and that kind of thing? Yeah, just word of mouth and social media. But he also, and and this was this was the one iteration I think that happened after his wife started playing. He created a very simple way for you to, when you finish your wordle for the day, whether you succeed or whether you fail, he created a very simple way. You hit share, and boom, it puts on your computer or phone's clipboard. Mm. that image that if you've seen it all over social media, you might have come to love to hate. Um, that image is now on your clipboard. You can go paste it into a text message to share it with your family or, of course, post it on Twitter or Facebook or wherever the heck you want. So and it's obscured. It shows everything that happened in your game. So you can look at someone else's game and see what they did. Right. But you don't see the letters. You see uh. you see which places they got right or wrong on any given attempt. But the rest is obscured. So I can go look at your thing, even if I haven't done my wordle for the day. Uh, and you wouldn't. And it yeah. wouldn't tell me anything. Oh, okay. you know, but then once I know what the word is, then it's really fascinating to go and look at what you did. And it's like, oh, I see how you like I, I won't be able to know exactly what you guessed or, you know, especially maybe your first words not going to be obvious. Yeah. But as you go, as you progress through it, it's like, oh, I see how you did that. And that's really interesting to us humans, right? So the, the social aspect of this is just as important as the, it, it, you know, having his primary customer, his wife, go after yeah. it. So, and, like and I don't think a, you can put too fine a point on that, that we, you know, having yeah. that, you know, what problem are you solving and, and who are you solving it for, right? And, and I think you look at just a ton of successful businesses that, yeah. are, that have move from this idea to action stage is they've, it, they have a very narrow subset, even just themselves. Hey, I built this thing for me. Yeah. I made this thing for me um, because I had this problem. And uh, I, I think that's great. It's yeah. Great no, mo most, I, I think most simple ideas are built for one person. You know, I mean, how many, how many people have we talked to on this show that, 
it's it's like, well, why'd you start your business? It's like, well, I, I needed to solve this problem for myself. Yes. And, yeah. and, you know, I had this itch to scratch and, and it was important to me to get it right. And then they realized, wait, that's actually our business now is selling yeah. that. Thing. And, and I think it's good too, to ignore, uh, Sometimes you have to kind of ignore the sexy stuff. You have to remind yourself. Yeah. Remember we had uh, Greg, and I forget his last name, from Jungle Scout on, um, and he runs an amazing uh, business that helps you uh, ramp up an Amazon business and everything else. But his his concept was you have to pick things that you would your friends will think are just, well, oh, that's a stupid idea. Or that's it's a, stup- it's a too simple product. And, yeah. and he did it. We, he did a whole uh demo and he found these uh long bamboo um s'mores sticks oversized big long things and he created a whole product line around it and he goes through it's i'm sure that the tutorial is still up at junglescout.com yeah um and and the same thing like you know if you like uh, shark tank you know the number one product ever come through uh the most profitable product ever to go through shark tank is a sponge Oh, is that right? I had no idea. No, that's sponge awesome. Sponge Daddy, the Sponge Daddy, okay. and and it it, <laughs> it has a little smiley face on it, and when the water gets cold on it, I think it gets a little firm, and when it gets hot, it gets a uh, you know a little softer, and it's used for different things. But that's that's it. And so these simple, simple. Um, another huge one was the thing that hangs down in the drain and catches like your the nasty hair and everything oh, that falls down. That in there. thing's amazing. Yeah. Yes. A yeah, huge yeah, yeah, product. Yeah. Uh, you know, could be a billion dollar product by now. I don't know, but sure. I know yeah, it was yeah, several yeah, yeah. hundred million dollars. So that kind of, when people come and ask me talking like, Hey, what should I sell? I want to get in the business. I want to resell. Da, 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 da. And they're always like often I wish I want to do like consumer electronics or I want to sell iPhones or, you know, Apple products. And it's like, man, that's the worst thing to sell. It's just too popular. It's too There's popular. no money in it. Yeah. Find something that's just a niche, a little small thing that you can really focus on and has great margin and won't be turned into a commodity overnight. So. And well, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, th- this is a thing that you could try to create something like this, but we don't need another game like this. Like this no, game, this, this game takes up more of more than its fair share it's done it's done, it's done. Uh, that, that, that that idea is it's it's small business and now it's onward to you know, yeah i just you know it so yeah good story a lot of good lessons there uh, great lessons i i know i love it i love it Me it's too. it's I, you know i it it as i dug into it i'm like oh man this is fascinating and there's so many people creating different things like my son when he was home over his winter break, he came down one day and he's like, has everybody, because in the house we started playing it and it's fun, you know, whatever. And he says, has everybody done their, their Wordle for today? I'm like, yeah. He says, okay. He pulls out his computer. He's like, I've been busy for the last three days. I wrote this Python engine to help uh, me guess what awesome. word the day would be, you know, by taking the feedback from the app. And he's narrowed this thing down. He, he did a lot of stuff last semester with uh, genetic algorithms Oh. Where where you have one algorithm that sort of spawns children and it figures out what the best path is and then sort of comes cascades back up. And and he's like, yeah, he's like, I use genetic algorithms and and was able to do this. And I think he had it to where it would solve it in an average of like four guesses, four and a half guesses per day. And then we found the dictionary from the, you know, from Wordle. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. put that in. That's going to help. Right. And he's down to like 3.6. Now, of course. He could just write an app to use the code to tell you what today's word is, but he didn't yeah, want to do that. Fun. Right. Yeah. yeah. Not as fun. Right. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't require nearly as complex an algorithm to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Good it's stuff. good. Uh, awesome. All right. Well, we have uh, we have some some stuff to talk about uh, the problem solving mindset the next thing that I want to do, if it works for you, is talk about our sponsor for today. Yeah, I love these guys. Let's do it. You know what that sound is? I love that sound. That sound makes me happy because that is the sound of another sale on Shopify, our sponsor, and the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. The, this Shopify platform has been designed for anyone to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs like you and me the resources that were once reserved only for big businesses. And now we get to customize them for our needs. We can make great looking stores that bring our ideas to life and they have tools to manage your day to day and all that stuff. Shannon and I both use Shopify in the past. It it is it is so simple. 
You don't want to reinvent any wheels when you're starting a business, right? Especially if it's not the focus of your business. Well, this is the focus of their business. And they invented a heck of a wheel that you and I just get to use. It's freaking amazing. You've got to go check it out. And it's not just you and me. Shopify powers millions of entrepreneurs just like us from first sale to full scale. Every 28 seconds, a small business owner makes their first sale on Shopify. So you can get started building and customizing your online store with no coding or design experience needed. They have all the tools that you need to help you find customers, drive sales, like I said, to manage your day-to-day. They've got 24-7 support, so you are never alone. Get started. Go to shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash SBS right now. That's shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. All right, man, take us into this well, you you want you wanted me to you want me to well, share the it, story? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because okay. you you kind of you know pointed it out that you know having this problem solving mindset is is a, is really small businessing. So you know, share your example, and then we'll we'll take a little deeper dive into it. Sure. So you know, I like the band Fish. That might have come up once or twice on the show over the years. If if it yep. hadn't, then I uh, then I do. And they're playing in Mexico later this month. COVID's also, you know, been happening for the last couple of years. Uh, raging in in January is, you know, the Omicron thing moved through. And they offered people the opportunity for a refund. Uh, this was something people were hoping that they would do. And when things hit level four for Mexico with the CDC, they said, OK, there, there's refunds. And somebody was saying, well, is there a way to upgrade my room and, you know, and it, like they still want to go. They just want to have a different room. Maybe when things went on sale, it sold out really fast. And so people wound up at, you know, a resort that's different from the one where the band is playing and they wanted to, you know, move in. And and uh, they're like, is there any way to, to do that? And I said, well, uh, why don't you just book the new room that's available and then take advantage of the cancellation window that exists? And people were like astonished at this idea. <laughs> and, and I was like, well, this seems obvious. I said, the only issue is you got to have access to capital to do that. Cause you know, yeah, it's, right, it's going right. to be somewhere between I, five and yeah. 10 grand that you're going to, you've already got laid out and maybe four and eight, I don't know, whatever it is, Yeah, you know, and, and you're going to need to do that again and probably wait 60 days for your refund to come through. Get right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So I'm like, you got to have access to that cash or cash equivalent, like a credit card that you're willing to float or, you know, if maybe you've got the, the cash, I don't, you know, everybody's scenario is different, but yeah, if, sure. if you're willing to do that, it, the refund is a guarantee in this window of opportunity that they've given us. And you can go online and see that there's all these packages available. Like, why wouldn't you just do that? It seemed painfully obvious to me. Not even painfully. Just like, well, that's how you would solve. That's the easiest solution to this problem. And so many people were like, wow, I never really thought of it. This is amazing. Thank you. That's what I'm going to do. I'm so happy. And I was super stoked to help people. But I was also like, why am I the only one to think? And I know I'm not the only one to think of this. But, you know, why why isn't this obvious to everyone and this is a problem, I, I, you know, a fault of mine. I think that what's obvious and logical to me should be obvious and logical to everyone. And if no. it's not, I'm happy to no. take to, I'm happy to take 30 seconds and explain it to you. And by the end of which, I assume we're going to be on the same page and there's no further discussion necessary. It, and, and it's not a, a like a smart thing or whatever, because no. everybody's a genius in their own way. No. Right. right. Yeah. This person, isn't this isn't an yeah, intelligence it, thing. It's no, a it's, it's a mindset. It's, it's a mindset. And it's the way. Yeah. It's just over time. You uh, I think the most successful small business owners uh, either already had it or they certainly have to develop it over time uh, to become successful because you're constantly solving problems. You know, there, I, I always make the statement, you know, no problems, no business. Right. Uh, so just get used to it. Yeah. Um, Gosh, what I, a I, great I, statement. I don't know that yeah, I've ever I, heard you say that before, but I love that. That's yeah, great. It's true. Because yeah. I mean, hear people, you know, one of the, <laughs> the, uh, parts of my notes is, Hey, you don't, we used to shut down complaints unless it's followed up with a solution. It's like, okay, yes. 
uh, we only allow complaints if you if the end of your sentence it doesn't end. It's OK. This is a problem or I hate it when this happens. OK, but here's my idea to make it not happen again. Right. And, uh, in, you know, and if you don't have those like those problems, there's no revenue. You're, you're fixing something with this product that you made for your primary customer uh, or your service or, or whatever it is. We're yeah. all really in. I mean, I know you you like to say, and I do agree with it, we're all in the customer service business, but it's, it is it is the same thing when you say we're all in the problem solving business. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. solving problems for other people. Hopefully you can do it in a way where they feel loved and, and you were polite to yeah. them. But, yes. Um, yes. but it, I think, I think, I think it's, I think both are true and they, they can be mutually exclusive. Like you can be solving yeah. people's problems and not be good at customer service. Like well, just, just solving yeah. the problem doesn't mean you did good customer service. Well, and I, I think you, a really good point that you just made and kind of quickly went by that I want to revisit is there's some, uh, there's a technique to it yeah. so that you don't. You know, you don't want to come across as arrogant or I think I'm smarter than you. You're just throwing out what what if we did this or how would yeah. this work? And and then you I think you also have to be open to other people tweaking your your solution. Right. You're because you're just like, OK, well, this you could try this and then somebody could come and, and even make it better. Right? right. I think that's that's really important. Don't fall in love with your own solution. No, um, just put it out there and let it let it live, you know, uh, yeah, let it life. live. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. 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 You, you need a little bit of humility, a uh, little I bit of so. com compassion, really. It, it, it gets your, it gets your solution. It's persuasion. It, it's so it, totally it persuasion. gets your solution adopted, uh, more readily than if you came across as some jerk that are just like, Oh, you guys are idiots. I know the answer to this. Let's do this. You, that, yep. that doesn't work. You have to get everybody on board and you may even have to hold your solution back a bit and lead people to it. Uh, right? Totally. Yes. I, as you were saying that I was thinking, okay, well, you know, I could have, and this was just in some Facebook group or something, you know, about the event yeah, where, yeah. where I posted this, but you know, I could have said, what are you, an idiot? Why don't yes. you do it this way? Right <laughs> and now, there are plenty of people that do that. They may still have taken my solution because, I, but again, this is me applying my logic to your brain. But you know, if I even if somebody called me an idiot and I saw a solution that was that good, I'd be like, oh well, I'm I'm in. You know, I'll do that anyway. Screw that guy. But but that doesn't always work, right? <laughs> like, no, you know, well, and the, and it rarely works. Like, yeah, yeah, it doesn't. And one of my arguments. uh, you know, against the, inter the internet is that it allows people to talk to one another like they would never talk to one another in person that way. Right. And you got to really be careful that you don't uh, let that uh, cynicism or negativity get involved, especially if you're trying to, you know, offer up a solution that you want to be adopted. Yeah. Um, you need to, you need to think about it. Um, yes. And, and yeah. I, I, no, but you're and, right. And Some people, so, I, I, and I, I learned this from both my wife and my daughter, um, that sometimes a solution is not the reason a problem is presented or that, no, the, the, it's yes. always that way. <laughs> yes. The, 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 the desire of a solution is often it, that too can be mutually exclusive from expressing yeah. a problem. And, and some people do just want to be, in fact, we all just want to be heard, want to be especially heard. people yeah. who like us, who have major psychological issues and just do a podcast so that yes. we know that yes. we're being heard. Uh, but y you know, like sometimes to your point, you have to hold back that solution. So like how said, do you identify? Yeah. How do you, cause it brings up a very good point. Um, how do you identify when that person, whether it's an employee, partner, whoever, yeah. um, will stay out of our personal lives. Cause that's a whole different topic, yeah. but, <laughs> sure. uh, you know, how, what are the signs that this person that came to you, so you don't just jump on them like, what's your solution? <laughs> you know, or, or offer up a solution. You know, what what are the signals that, hey, this person just needs to share this problem or maybe even this experience that they had? Um, what I've learned to do, because anytime I'm presented with a problem, I am immediately thinking, how would I solve this? Yeah. Like, And, and yeah. then once I come up with that, I want to share, you know, that's, but it's what I do. It's it, it, as a small business, like the, the whole point of this segment as a small business owner, it's sort of my default mindset, right? It's how I approach things. What I have learned through trial and error is that I need to, if I can come up with the solution, I can let my brain do what my brain does. Cause that's what it's going to do anyway. 
And then I need to look for signs that someone is asking for help, not just to be heard. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah. people will say, I need help. That's super great. Like, I love right, that. Right. Doesn't always happen that way. Right. So you, you've got to look for cues that someone is going to be receptive to the solution. And sometimes it's really difficult because if somebody's really upset about a problem, they, you know, we all yeah. like what I do is I put myself in their mindset. They are venting about a problem. I've done that. They might want to solve it themselves. Like there's a, there's a lot yeah. to be said about that. And so often it's, I, I'm going to hold back on anything and let you decide whether you're going to try and solve this yourself or whether you're going to ask for help. And, and then at that point, I'm, if you ask me, I'm, I'm happy to come in. Now I, I say this, like I'm an expert at this. I fail at this all oh, the time, course. but, yeah, but I, it's, I've learned that I should and I hate using that word, but uh, that, you know, a smart thing is to be looking for those cues and waiting to act until I see them. Yes. And I think that if someone's angry or upset, um, you have to wait it out. They're, yeah, that, yeah. they're not open to hearing, you know, the, 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 that's one definitely for me, one of the signals that they just want to. And, and I really have to focus on listening yes. instead of trying to think of the solution all the time. And, and maybe that's one of the cons of, you know, owning these companies over the years that you just constantly, okay, how do I solve it so I can get on to the next thing? Yeah. And y y there are times when you just need to shut up and, and I'm speaking to myself, you know, I, I need to be quiet, really listen and, you know, whatever solution, if they want one uh, or ideas to solve that problem may be in another conversation, right? But they're so upset or, uh, you know, need to share this experience with you that you just need to be quiet and listen yeah. to them. And, just and listen. maybe just ask them, do you want some feedback on that? Or do you just, you know, do you, did you, you just, just need, need to, to talk? talk it out? Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. I, I think yeah. that's a good, that's idea. actually a great, that's a great way to approach just it. Ask them. Is, just is ask. ask. Yeah. yeah. Cause sometimes, you know, I, sometimes I will ask, and sometimes we even do it on this show where I say, look, I've got a problem. I want to talk it out. Yeah. The yeah, reason I'm talking it out is so that I can solve it. Not necessarily to have someone else tell me, I, I just need a sounding board. Yeah. And I learned that when I was doing a lot of computer consulting, people would hire me. I'd come to their home or office and, you know, tell me their problems with their computer. Sometimes they'd also tell me their other problems, but we tried to focus yes. on the computer and then I would set about trying to figure out what was going on, what, what was wrong, and then what would the solution was. And I found that both for my own troubleshooting, but also very much for customer service, I would check in with the client once every, you know, I would say every 15 minutes, but it was probably more like every 20 or 30, right? I would check in with them if this problem was going on for a while and explain to them, okay, here's what I'm seeing. Here's what I've tried that hasn't worked. Here's what I'm thinking of trying next. If there was a decision to be made, I'd try to get them involved in the decision. You know, do we take path A or path B? What do you, you know, here's what I right. would do. What do you think? And it's good to get them involved because if you can't solve the problem, you still want the bill paid. But I also wanted to get them involved because they were another human that I could interact with on this problem. I did not expect them to have the answer because that's what they hired me for. Right. <laughs> so, yes, but, but right. just telling them and talking it out and trying to teach someone else what the problem was, I would often come up with, you know, a, a, a as I was coming up with a way of phrasing it, I would also come up with potential solutions. And, and, and I think that's also part of the diagnostic, right? Correct. Like they may say something like, oh, I forgot to tell you every exactly. time that happens, I hit this or yeah. this happens or whatever. So that that back and forth, uh, I think, is is really good. And I think if one of one of the things I really like to tell people um, is that, you know, the problems are really an opportunity. You know, right. there's a great book called The Obstacle is the Way, right? Ooh. And we'll put a link to, uh, and, and it's, uh, who's the author? Let me find here. Ryan Holiday. Okay. And uh, it, it's a great book. And it just talks really about, you need to embrace that problem. And, and it's very solution-based. Uh, and uh, it you you can get through these kinds of things. So, if even if you don't have advice to give, I think it's a valid thing to say. You know, once you figure this out, you're just going to be really 
you know, even more powerful and more confident that's because, it. Yeah. you know, you're coming up that that's what it builds up over time, you know, and, and, uh, I think that's a good way to do it. It shows empathy and it also helps, you know, them, them get to the other side of this. To the other side. That, yeah. That's the yeah. whole point. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 No, I like that. Yeah. Just ask. You want help? Yeah. You, you just want to talk yeah. it out. I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, uh, another, uh, super simple. Another thing I like to do is to, if you have a problem in your, in your business and it, maybe it seems insurmountable or you just can't figure it out is to look outside your company at other businesses and how they do things, even if it's a completely non-related business, sometimes that's even the best. Huh. Uh, and and think about how they solve particular problems. Like what did they do um, different? You know, like, okay, when it, when yeah, I can remember going to eight, the AT&T store and there would yeah. just be lines and a big nightmare. And then they changed their whole model. They kind of followed Apple, but they tweaked it a little bit to where, you know, as soon as you walked in, you were greeted by somebody, you put in a queue with what your problem was and said, Hey, okay, great. I'll, I gotcha. You, you know, somebody's going to come up to you as soon as they're done. Yeah. So, you know, I was like, that's a really unique way to treat a customer versus having your lobby, if you're, you know, a retailer or whatever, uh, full of of people that are just queued up. That are just, you, that don't even know they're queued up. They're like waiting. And they haven't been recognized. Yeah, yes, haven't been recognized. Know. Yeah, and yeah. the AT&T store, eventually, I, I left AT&T years ago for yeah, mobile. Me too. But, me too. Uh, yeah, because it saves a ton of money. Because it's way better. I'll put a link yeah. in the show notes for you. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's like 15 bucks a month for, per line. Like yeah. We've had them on the. On we, the that's right. We had them. We interviewed them. They were a sponsor for a little while. We still yeah. pay them. It's happy. It's great. Yeah. But um, I remember I, one of the last times I was in the AT&T store, I, I did exactly what you described. And then there I, was a board on the wall that mm. showed, you know, it was like it was kind of like the upgrade board at the airport. I think it might just yeah. show my first name. It wasn't, you know, personally identifiable in any creepy right. way. But it showed when I checked in, when I was expected yeah. to be helped right. and where I was in the queue. That transparency eliminates so much stress. Yeah, you might. I mean, it literally changes nothing, right? You're no. still going to get help in the and, same situation. It's the yeah. same scenario. You just get Presented. to see the screen instead of going up and asking, "Hey, uh, where are we in the queue?" or trying to peek around the person's corner. You know, it's like, why are we peeking? This is just data. Just show me the data. And so they did. I thought it was yeah. great. And so looking, yeah. yeah, looking at those kind of different things and how they're handled, and can you apply them to a, a particular situation you're having in your business can be can be really helpful. Um, I wish I had some more examples, but I'm sure that we could get some examples. Uh, if you've done this kind of thing, feedback at businessshow.co. We'd love to hear from you. We would love um, to hear from you. Yeah, I have a, just a couple more things. Okay. I, I want to fall back to one of our favorite comments ever uh, from a guest, Brian Friss from Digistore, where he said, uh, don't make fear-based decisions. And, yeah. you know, Problem solving mindset, you know, that is just one of the uh, the rules you have to you, you have to slow down, think about what's going on and get out of the panic mode to allow you to really think. And sometimes you need to walk away from the problem for a little while. You, you say, OK, I, I need to just kind of let it percolate and look at it sideways. And maybe you have to flank it a little bit Yep, because coming straight on, you just can't figure it out. I, I have found in those scenarios, the and I'm in one right now. I mean, it's not a big deal, but I say that and it easily could be something that I just let like completely dominate my my thought process. But I've learned and so what I've what I've done this time is I I found out about the problem. It was like, OK, I called one of my business partners and just told him about it. You know, wasn't looking yeah. for an answer, but just yeah. told him about it. And by, simply by telling someone else about the problem, it was like, OK, this is no longer my burden to carry. I, it's my it's mine to solve. Like I still got to yeah. figure it out, you know, but it's like, oh, I talked it out. It's really not nearly as big of a deal as I probably would have made it to myself. And and then I get to do what you're talking about, where I get to put it in the background and let my yeah. mind percolate because that and listen to other stories. Like yes. they'll probably be like, "Oh, I had something like that happen one time." And yep. da 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 da. And and it, it, you're just kind of opening yourself up. So you 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 know some of these solutions come in via osmosis, right? Yeah, they man. Kind of trickle in and and or you're you know you're reading or you're doing something like oh. I could, I could do this. I could use that, yep. that tactic to, to yep. solve it. So, so give yourself a break. You don't need to solve it right away. Um, the, the last thing I, I would leave you with today, it's one thing that I learned over time, especially in the tech business, is that 
especially new employees or new managers, sure, they often want to set policies on what I would call singular situations where edge cases, man, you can't yes, do it. Something happened. And then they came in and said, Hey, we have to change the website or add this to our terms and conditions or, uh, you know, make this new policy and that kind of thing. And I would always remind them, look, we don't set policy that way. We, we study. And if we have systemic problems that occur over and over and we see trends then we can look about how do we change things or set a policy to avoid that. But don't respond to every single thing with a policy or, I mean, yeah. you'll have a 200 page term. Your, your, your terms oh, and conditions will be like, it'd ridiculous. be crazy. I, I learned early on in my publishing slash podcasting career, and it really came home to roost when I started podcasting, but, but it was happening when we were just publishing Mac Observer, you know, in the years before was that, if certainly if there was something systemic, like people started reporting, like every time I go to this page, my browser crashes. OK, well, oh, yeah. OK, let's take a look at that. But if it was like, I don't like this <laughs> now, if again, if if there was enough of that to where there was a consistent number of people regularly saying this is a problem for me, I don't like this about your site. We would give it a little bit of attention. We may not change it, but we would certainly have a conversation and, and like I said, give it a little bit of attention. But the one offs I found really interesting because yeah. most of the time it would be one of those things where it's like, OK, you, you're having a bad day. You're taking it out on me. I'm here for you. I got you. It's fine. You know, and I would often reply, you know, anytime I replied, it doesn't matter how vitriolic their email was. It was always, thank you so much for taking the time. I understand this is frustrating. I really appreciate that you wanted to tell me about this, you know, yeah. like that. Okay, great. You're, you're handing them the token. You're taking that's that. That's right. <laughs> the two tokens. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, yeah. what I noticed was sometimes just that one off, I would want to change policy because of it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, yeah. okay. Why is that? And and that's what I've learned to ask the team as well. Like some some piece of feedback comes in and suddenly it has a champion, right? We need to change something, policy or the website or w whatever. And it's like, okay, wait, this is literally one person that none of us know that sent this thing in. And now you are their champion for this cause. This tells me this means something to you. Because it means something to me when I like when I find myself and this is very much a projection thing. It's, you know, it's not a, a finger of blame thing. And I've found that there are times when someone else is much better at articulating a problem I've noticed, but haven't yet been able to like bring to the surface with the business, the website, whatever it is. And and usually it's my response or my reaction, not response, but my reaction to those things when they come in, it's like, okay, wait a minute. I care about this. It's, I don't, I don't know that person. So I, I can't have any, you know, care right. like, like, you know, some out of the ordinary care because it's them. No, I don't, I don't even know who you are. And you said this thing and it is occupying a lot of my headspace. I don't think this is a new thing that I've noticed. I think this is something that I've been thinking about for a while and now you've put it into words that let me zero in on what it might be. And, and that has served me well, but That's it good, takes, yeah. yeah, it takes a, a level of awareness. Like, okay, why is, why is this comment the one that you're obsessing over? What is it about that? And, and yeah. so, you know, we would have those conversations again, it's, you know, like we were talking about earlier, very, your approach especially when it's in someone else with myself, I can be pretty frank and, you know, brutally honest and like, okay, what's, what's up, Dave? Why are you thinking this way? But you know, when it's somebody else and it's like, what's what is it about you that makes this a problem? Yeah. You know, it comes across yeah. the wrong way. Good. So you got to make sure you couch that the right way, but it's like, okay, this clearly means something to you. Tell me about what you think. Don't worry. The, yeah, the person that your job, what the you person doing? that yeah. wrote in is, is now not relevant. I'm worried about yeah. you. You know, let's have this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, it, it becomes, and again, it's usually that somebody articulated a thing that, that, you know, one of us was unable to, uh, we probably eventually would have, but this just fast tracked it for us. Okay, great. Let's have the conversation. It's no problem. Help, help that person with this, the, a solution, uh, you know, that they can use mm -hmm. again and again. And then it's like, Hey, keep an eye on this. If you start seeing this and, and, you know, but here's how, you, you know, here's some ideas on solving it. So yeah. Here's can, how it's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's great.
It's good stuff. So we, we've covered this pretty good. We'd love, again, to hear how you use your problem-solving mindset. Feedback at businessshow.co or join us in the small business support group at yes. businessshow.co slash Facebook. And we'll do the uh, creating a culture focused on results next time because we have a lot to talk about there too. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good one to yeah. do. And we do have smallbusinessing.com. It's Fantastic. already pointing at the website, and I'm trying to make the email work. But, you know, there's only good. so many things I can do while we're recording a podcast. Uh, so, yeah, you know. yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was a domain we should have as I was saying it out loud at the beginning of the episode. I was like, oh, we should have that. I agree. Oh, yeah. I agree, yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks for listening, folks. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for spending your time with us. We won't take up any more of it. We will let you go. Check out our sponsor, though, Shopify.com slash SBS. I think you're going to really appreciate the service that they provide. Keep, uh, keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week. Bye.